William Tackett hit this beautiful rolling calf crush at the BGJ Fanatics Submission Only Grand Prix. And uh, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's such a great move. I had to break it down, right? Uh, William, we've been keeping an eye on him for a while. He's like, you know, still a teenager. He's a purple belt, but he's been making some serious waves on the no-gi scene. And just look at this clip of him competing here. You know, he's always moving. He's rolling, he's spinning, he's on top, he's on bottom. He's got, he's got great situational awareness. He's a fantastic scrambler. And um, of course, that's an attribute that he uses to hit this submission, which starts from this position right here. So William has actually got a really, really good top half guard passing game. We've seen it uh, usually when he uses like a body lock to control the upper body, but in this scenario right here, he is in a very traditional uh, underhook and cross face half guard passing position. Uh, you can't see it, but that's good actually because we don't want to really want to focus on what he's doing with his upper body right now because this technique is all about the footwork and about what he's doing with his legs. So this is what we're going to highlight right here. So, William is in this position, he's got his hips high, he's kind of in this tripod style passing position, yeah? And you might think that he wants to get the knee that is trapped here, that he maybe wants to drop it down to the inside for the knee slice pass, or he could pass it through to the far side hip and go straight into the mount. So, let's see which of those options he decides to go with. So the first thing that William does is he brings that free leg and he places the instep, just he hooks it on the inside of his opponent's thigh. Now what that enables him to do is to create downward pressure with that leg while he's able to lift his hips up and free his trapped leg that's in the half guard. Now, right here, this is key. This is the moment where William has two options. He can either come this way and start passing to his opponent's left side, or he could drop the knee over to the other side, to the far side, and he can go directly into the mount, okay? Now, his opponent's reaction is what sets up what follows. Let's see what happens. So, after bringing his hips up, William brings his hips back down and he goes into mount position. So his left knee is on the mat, on the far side of his opponent. Can't see it right now from this angle, but you can see that whereas his leg was completely trapped in the, the, the half guard, he's managed to extend his hips high, free the knee, and then drop the knee to the mat on the far side. So in effect, this is almost a mount. Sometimes you hear people call it like almost a quarter guard or like a half mount because he's, uh, he's for all intents and purposes, he's, he's straddling the torso, he's got both knees on the mat. The only thing that's gonna impede his forward pro uh, progress is, is this. So as you can see right here, his opponent has his thighs sandwiched and, and clasped on William's foot. So basically the, the thighs of his opponent are just kind of around about like the lower leg, just, just above the ankle. And that, that can be tricky because of course, if William wants to keep advancing up and he wants to take like an arm bar, uh, or if, even if he wants to try and take the back, then he needs to get that leg free, right? But what's really cool in this scenario is that William senses that even though it is an obstacle, it's also an opportunity. So what does he do? Let's take a look. So you can see that he's kind of like feeling it, he's feeling it, and he already reaches back with his other leg, moves way, way back, whereas he was straddled over the torso here. He actually has taken that knee and he's brought it all the way back here, and he's triangled his legs, right? So he's got that now on top of, on top of his opponent's thigh, okay? Now we think, well, that's strange, right? Because shouldn't he want to advance up the body to try and get his hips up high underneath the, uh, the, the shoulders and, and, and try and isolate an arm for an armbar or a triangle? No, because William's got a, something else in mind. He's gonna roll through for that calf crush. So he's already brought his knee back and like I said, he's triangled his legs here, okay? But 
to be able to roll through, to roll forward like this, he needs to get rid of this posting arm. So his opponent is basically making a frame from the bottom because he wants to try and scoot his hips back to escape. But William needs to deal with this frame and what he does is you can see that he uses his hand and he's just gonna pop it off across so that he can ren dive through with his left shoulder all the way through to here to do the forward roll. Play it and see. Pops it off, boom, rolls through into the attacking position. So let's slow it down and take a look at this step by step because that's a lot happening all at once, right? So William postures up, got the triangle here, has to deal with the frame. Pops off the arm in that direction, passes it across, play, pops it off there. So he's done a roll all the way through now, hasn't changed his leg position, but he's had to get that left shoulder from it was up here, high posture, and he's had to take it all the way through to as close to his knees as possible. It's not enough to just kind of come to here and roll because it's, uh, the leverage is weak. What he wants to do is he wants to get as far through as he possibly can because then the natural motion of diving his head and his chest underneath will bring his hips over and as the hips come over the top, so will the legs and that is what's going to flip his opponent over, okay? Play on. There it goes. So, no real strength on William's part. The roll kind of like takes care of itself, right? And you can see now that his hips are flat on the ground and you can get a better look at what he's doing. But I have to highlight this as well because this is also really, really cool. The opponent's leg that's in danger is not going anywhere. But what William's done to kind of aid this attack is he scooped up the free leg, which is that little foot just hanging out in midair right there. And he's actually got a really good grip of that. Because the leg that he wants to attack is actually that one. Okay, but if he goes straight to it, his opponent has options of kind of like triangling his legs and making it a little bit more difficult. So watch what William does here. reaches over the top of the leg that he wants to pull down on, that he wants to get that calf slicer, play. And he simply scoops out and he passes across that free leg until he gets into this here. And this is a perfect look at the calf slicer position, okay? So the shin is in the back of his opponent's knee. So. Look at the triangle position, very familiar in jiu-jitsu, right? Triangled his legs, but his opponent's leg comes through like that, and William's calf slice in action is right there, okay? So, in, in effect, imagine that the shin is a blade, as a knife, and what he's done is he's inserted it into the back of the knee, into the meaty part of the, of the, of the calf, right behind the knee, and what he's going to do is he's going to pull down on the long end of the lever, which is the far point, which is the foot, while pushing up with his, uh, with his shin into the back of the knee. And it's going to be a really painful move. And if his opponent doesn't tap, then what will happen is that knee, which is in a, a state of um, flexion, or basically will separate if he doesn't tap. So it's not just a pain compliance submission, it's also a legit joint lock at the same time. And just play it on. And you can see kind of the positioning of the foot in the back of the thigh as he lets go. A fantastic submission from this, uh, this prodigious youngster, William Tackett. Uh, just his nogi game is fantastic for such a young guy. Um, big things for him. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for this guy but there's a perfect example of what to expect should you watch him.